largest economy since 1871. Its nominal GDP is currently 21. Bro, we're broke, bro. We're broke, bro. We're broke. No, we're not strong, bro. We're broke, bro. My pockets is hurting, bro. We're broke. Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy Skylar, and today we got how strong is the United States military and why is the US military the strongest? All right, I hope you guys enjoy, and always please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and let's get it. Why is the US military the strongest? Great military powers have been appearing and disappearing since the beginning of history. Now is the time for the United States of America to be Damn, the leader in military though. might. Ooh. But what makes it so powerful? Will its power remain undisputed? Are there already signs of weakness? Would it really stand in a conflict with potential rivals like China or Russia? To find out, we should analyze why exactly the US military is considered the strongest. The population alone of China is insane. <laughs> the population, the amount of people in China is insane, bro the numbers like, oh my god like, the u.s military... has 1,400,000 active military personnel this figure places it in third place in this category china oh, has the India largest well. army with slightly above 2 million soldiers while india comes in second place this doesn't sound that impressive but what makes the u.s military stand out is not necessarily the raw number of men the u.s has unquestionable air oh, supremacy oh my god the US military is number one in air power, with 13,264 total military aircraft, a total that is greater than the other five greatest air forces combined. Oh my God. 2,085 are air-to-air -air fighters, 715 ground attack aircraft, 945 transportation aircraft, 5,768 Damn. helicopters, and 967 attack helicopters. But you know what's smart though? What they say, whoever what wins the sky wins the war, whatever that saying is, exactly, that's smart. So <laughs> you win the sky, you basically win the war. Like the US is number one in each aircraft yeah. category, except for air to ground forces, where it's slightly topped by Russia. The US has a powerful navy that is designed to work in conjunction with its air forces. It has 20 aircraft carriers, 11 are regular fixed wing carriers, while 9 are capable of hosting only helicopters and short takeoff planes like the F-35B. This Bro, is almost technology... half of the world's total number of aircraft carriers, wow. while most of the others belong to allied countries. If we take into account only regular fixed wing aircraft capacity, the total combined deck space of the US aircraft carriers is over twice that of all the other nations combined. America, i not gonna lie, American military itself is insane. Just watching this, and I live in America, right? So I'm feeling completely like grateful and safe knowing that we have this to protect me, but it just like at the same time, like you don't really know until you watch videos like this. You feel me? Like this is not like the public information. You have to do your research to know these type of like numbers and whatnot. So seeing this is like, damn, this is where my tax money is going to. <laughs> to complement this, the US Navy has the greatest number of destroyers and ranks third in the number of submarines. The numbers of the US naval strength are a bit tricky. If we count the total number of naval assets, the US falls in fourth place behind Russia and China, oh, really? and even behind North Korea that boasts a surprising first place. North Korea. However, in case of a maritime hmm. conflict, it would still be hard to counter the power of the US Navy, supported by overwhelming air supremacy and allied forces. Land power. The US is slightly behind Russia regarding raw numbers. American ground forces number 6,289 tanks, 39,000 armored vehicles, 1,465 self-propelled artillery, and 1,366 rocket projectors. However, Russia has a lot of outdated vehicles with questionable performance in case. It seemed like America. It seemed like <clears throat> America prioritized like you can see what they're doing. Like the more important stuff, like they put all their money into. 
to like when it comes to like the aircraft when it comes to like especially like sell like air like especially like air because the way how america is located you know between south and um between south america and canada it's just like we're in that perfect position we're not like over there like surrounded like middle east like countries and whatnot so yeah it's kind of smart the way they put the money of a real conflict. Meanwhile, the US military has a broad technological edge. The US has 5,800 nuclear warheads that make it the world's second largest in nuclear war power. In this video, we're analysing the conventional military strength, but it can't be denied that a nuclear arsenal does bring a certain status. That is Even scary, if things bro. don't escalate to a full-blown nuclear war, it's intimidating to any country to be armoured with such nuclear power. Just knowing one country has a capability to end life on Earth is it, it doesn't make sense. Like, why would anyone want that much power? Like, why? Like, come on, man. The quality. We need to come the to US Army consists entirely of trained professionals, and many have real combat experience. Since the beginning of this century, the US has been involved in military conflicts in Afghanistan, Iraq. Pakistan, Somalia, Libya, Uganda, and Yemen. While other countries still rely on conscripts to fill the numbers, the US can field an army of well-trained, experienced professionals. The equipment, the military assets, and the technology mm. used in combat have excellent quality. This is the defining reason why US casualties are usually fewer than those of their adversaries. A strong ability. We might have fewer numbers, but our training is top notch. It's like I don't think there's any other country when it comes to like military military training come close to America. Like we might be lower numbers, but trust me, our one is equivalent to like ten of y'all. <laughs> to project power is another defining trait of the United States military. Size, technology, and experience are nothing if you can't reach the enemy. Power projection is the ability of a state to deploy and sustain forces outside its territory. Only a few states are capable to overcome the difficulties that involve power projection, and the US excels at it. This is made possible by several factors. The home base of the US is safe. The neighboring countries are- This is exactly what I was trying to explain earlier in the video. Thank you. Because I know some people are probably like, what is this guy talking about? Thank you. Ah, oh, damn. Factors. <laughs> the home base of the US is safe. The neighboring countries are friendly. Potential enemies are far away. The large landmass makes it a country that is hard to invade. It also has coastlines along two oceans and strategic islands that hold military bases. The US forces can reach. F Fun fact I'm from originally from the Virgin Islands, St. Croix, and. That island is one of those. We hold a lot of military stuff over on that island. I just want to point that out. Feel me? Feel far, far, and deploy out. great numbers <laughs> of forces supported by the enforcement of air and sea superiority, combined with excellent transportation capabilities. Even if it doesn't engage in combat, the U.S. can enforce naval and air blockades that can severely cripple an enemy's economy. The US has by far the largest network of military bases operating outside of its territory. Information regarding the exact number and location of such uh -huh. bases involves classified information, so we can only estimate the total extent of the overseas military presence. Back in 2013, the Pentagon stated that there were around 600 military bases overseas. A rough yeah. estimate would be around 1,000 overseas US military compounds. I believe there Approximately 165,000 military personnel is stationed outside the United States. This doesn't include areas of conflict such as Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan. The US has significant forces deployed in around 55 countries and autonomous territories. It is also estimated that more than 150 countries have a certain degree of US military presence. Bro, the U.S. Alliances. have fingerprints all around the world. The United <laughs> States can rely on a vast network of alliances. It is the de facto leader of NATO, the world's strongest military alliance. 18 yes, other countries sir. are designated as major non-NATO allies. This list includes countries like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, Philippines, Thailand, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Egypt, Israel, Argentina and Brazil. 
Taiwan's status is a bit more complicated and it can be considered a de facto ally. Some countries are not formal allies, but have a strong strategic partnership with the US. One notable example is India, that participates in regular military drills together with US forces and some of its allies. Let me stop. That's Economy. probably disrespectful. My, Modern my warfare my is sustained in the long term by two main factors. The capacity to produce military equipment and the capacity to spend money on defense. American defense companies are the indisputable top producers. Bro, look, not gonna lie, milk like fighting jets, bro. They're like the most like futuristic looking thing like you can possibly like design. Just looking at this is like holy. <laughs> it just look like a jet from like twenty, like twenty sixty or something. Like God, damn. juices of weaponry. Among the world's top 10 defense suppliers, five of them are American companies. Lockheed Martin is the biggest. It reported a revenue of almost 60 billion US dollars in 2019. Damn. That's close to Russia's entire annual military spending. The strength of the US military is also due to its huge military budget. In 2019, spending on the US military was a whopping 732 billion US dollars. That's almost three times more than China, oh. the world's second largest military spender, and is roughly one third of the entire world's defense budget. Well, Russia is that like a bad thing though? Is like, do we really need to put that much money into our military? Like, cause we could use some of that money back home in our in the, you know in the country, you know, with the homeless and like you know the drug addicts on the streets, maybe clean up some of the like some of this you know cities around the country maybe with some of the money i don't know i'm just trying to like you know maybe trying to help home before you're trying to help other country type stuff i don't know it's commonly regarded as the second and you know a lot of that it goes into like weapons and that weapons usually we just give to other countries to help protect themselves and then they end up losing and then that weapon end up in the enemy's hand and then it just like you know you know what i'm saying so most powerful army in the world, its budget consists of only $65 billion. Damn. Arguably, there is an aspect of purchasing power. For example, it's cheaper to pay a Russian or Chinese soldier. But the cost of high quality military equipment is still the same around the world. The reason that the US can afford such an enormous military budget is that it's supported by a strong economy. America has been the world's largest economy since 1871. Its nominal GDP is currently 21. Bro, we're broke, bro. We're broke, bro. We're broke. No, we're not strong, bro. We're broke, bro. My pockets is hurting, bro. We're broke. She's lying to you guys, okay? No. No. We can't afford to be living like this, bro. 1.44 trillion US dollars. This is almost a quarter of the global economy, and it's backed with plenty of natural resources, advanced infrastructure and technology. Besides the ability to sustain an enormous defence budget, the US often uses its economic strength as a weapon by enforcing economic sanctions. Mm -mm -mm. Soft factors. Soft power is another factor that comes into play when assessing a country's might. The US is world beating in culture, education and technology. American pop culture has an enormous influence, and this won't change anytime soon. America also hosts most of the world's top-ranking universities with a record number of international students. The US no. leads the world of I technology and digitalization, as home to the world's most influential tech companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook. It's easy to think that this doesn't seem important in warfare, but imagine an enemy soldier that would have to attack the country where his cousin studies, the country of his favorite music band, the country of his favorite actors from the movie that he watches on an American media platform like YouTube, or an American smartphone with American software. Finally, there is another critical aspect. It is called the will to fight. And this is the single most important factor in war. The will to fight is the disposition to engage in combat. The determination to keep fighting even when facing precarious odds and finally to win at an individual level a soldier with a low that, will to bro, fight bro, will avoid bro. engagement with the enemy and is likely to flee when things get tough a battle is won when the enemy's will to fight is broken 
wars don't end when one military destroys the other. Wars end when one side grows weary of fighting, doesn't see any further purpose in the continuation of the conflict, and gives up. The national will to fight is what keeps a nation fighting. This is commonly linked to a sense of patriotism, national identity, and motivation generated by the idea that one fights for what is right. In the past, this has been a strong point of the US, as Americans have been fighting against dictators and terrorists that lacked concern for human life and dignity. In contrast, the USA has been regarded as a country that embodies values of freedom, democracy, and rule of law. It was the country that defined such values. Even more, it was the country that was willing to fight for these values. The American soldier has been motivated by a sense of moral supremacy rooted in the country's Christian tradition. However, America doesn't seem to be so cohesive in its values anymore. There are many factors intertwined that provoke this. It's a complex topic that deserves a study on its own. But the outcome is that America is now a country that is greatly divided among ideological lines and systems of belief. Many of its citizens are not sure what to believe in anymore, or even what they stand it's so for. Sad, bro. There have been many lessons in history. Small nations became great empires by holding high moral standards along with a disciplined and motivated army. A great empire's fall was usually preceded by... I hear what she's saying. Are we at the downfall, bro? I, I, <clears throat> is America on our downfall? It, it, are, we, are we going down, bro? You hear what she's saying? Other countries is saying discipline and staying strong. While America, was divided, we're confused, we don't know what to believe. Like, damn, bro, we're, we're doomed. Internal strife we're and moral doomed. crisis. Oh my God. The final <laughs> story of the United States of America as a global power is not yet written. The nation's strength rests upon its citizens and their decisions. It's a matter of this great nation getting back its cohesion and moral compass. That is, if it wants to keep its status as the world's greatest superpower and defender of freedom. Facts. I appreciate you guys, If you, especially if you stick around this long to the very end. Bro, I appreciate you guys, bro. Uh, yeah, as usual, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. All right, peace.